Hello friends, welcome back to our Kinematics of Particle Lecture Series. Today we are going to cover Cylindrical Coordinate Curvilinear Motion Analysis using Cylindrical Coordinate System. So let's see what is our um, learning objective today. So today we are going to talk about or solve Curvilinear Motion Problem using Cylindrical Coordinate System. We'll talk about how can you or when you should solve a problem using cylindrical or polar coordinate system and we'll saw some uh, examples. So when you should use a cylindrical or polar coordinate system? You should use this system when the motion of a particle is constrained on a path and what we mean by that I'm gonna explain that um, in a little bit but let's review the equation once you have decided that this dynamics problem this dynamics problem belongs to kinematics of a particle and I can use polar or cylindrical coordinate system for this problem what set of equation you should use so first you start with polar coordinate system. If your problem is in 2D on a plane, then you should use polar coordinate system. For polar coordinate system, you should have r and theta. r is the radial distance from the origin and theta is the angle. As you can see on this image here, r if this particle is moving along this path and you decide this path is constrained and we're going to say what we mean by that and if we decide to solve this problem using polar coordinate system you explain the position of that particle with r and theta r is the radial distance it has a vector and theta is the counterclockwise positive so let's just start with our velocity velocity uh, is defined as vr ur you know what is ur is it is the unit vector in our direction. V theta u theta is the theta component of the um, velocity and u theta is the unit vector for uh, theta. So in this here, u r is showing the direction of uh, the particle in radial distance and that on the transverse or 90 degree angle is the theta direction. So this is in the vector form. So the components would be VR and V theta. How can we find VR and V theta? So VR, the component of the velocity in radial R direction is, you know, velocity is with respect to time. So you have to take the derivative of R, which could be a function of theta or time with respect to time. So we call simply, we call it as a R dot. So R dot, would be r dr over dt with respect to time. Similarly, the v theta is defined as r d theta over dt. Again, d theta is dt is shortened, defined as theta dot. So if you know these two component, v r and v theta, you can get the total magnitude of the velocity using the Pythagorean law that we know. Then you have to square sum and then take a square root. Similarly, if we see the acceleration part, acceleration part will also have a radial component, a r, and a theta component, a theta, and they, they are um, in a direction. Those are marked by unit vector u r and u theta. Similarly, the equation to find a r is r double dot. What that means, right? R double dot means is second derivative of R with respect to time. So if R dot is first derivative of R, say R double dot would be second derivative of R. Minus the R is the actual radial distance and theta dot whole square. Um, the theta component comes with R theta double dot. Again, what is theta double dot? It is the second derivative of theta with respect to time okay um, this is important to remember that um, r dot and theta dot is derivative with respect to 
time. Okay, not x, y, or not time. Uh, not x, y, or anything else, but with respect to time. Then the second part is um, 2 r dot theta dot. So these are the formula to find uh, the components of acceleration. Once we have figured out these two, then you can find the total magnitude of the acceleration by using the Pythagorean law. So these are the equation for uh, velocity and acceleration in polar coordinate system. Let's see what is um, we have or what we have to do if we use cylindrical coordinate system. So when you should use cylindrical coordinate system? If your problem includes 3D, three dimension problem, then you have to use um, cylindrical coordinate system. And also, why don't you use rectangular 3D? Because if your path of the particle is constrained, we're gonna see what we mean by that. Then it is easier, better to solve those problems in polar coordinate system. So what is the difference in cylindrical coordinate system? In cylindrical coordinate system, the velocity ha will have a third term for z. So previously we had r dot, r theta dot. Now you have the z because you have additional dimension in z direction. So you will have this additional term. And you can find the magnitude by taking the same uh, Pythagorean format. Similarly, the acceleration will have the same term that you had um, for acceleration in polar coordinate system. Now you will have the z double dot because it's acceleration, it's a second derivative. Again, what is z double dot means is the second derivative of z with respect to time. Okay, so in cylindrical coordinate system, your particle moving in 3D coordinate, and that's why it is not constrained on a plane. So we have to add this z. So if it was, if you see here on this plane, you have the r and theta, which is polar coordinate system. You add your z to make it cylindrical, depending on your problem, whether it's polar, uh, whether it's a planar on a plane or 3D, you may would like to choose cylindrical, cylindrical or polar coordinate system. So let's see, we're, I was talking, uh, we're, we're telling you that you should use polar or cylindrical coordinate system when the path is constrained, right? Of the motion, path is constrained. What do we mean by that? So let's see one example. If you see a problem like this, the car is moving along the path, so the path is constrained. It's not any path, but on this path. Also, you see the location of the car is given with r and theta. So the motion is on a plane. So which coordinate system you want to use? polar coordinate system. Let's see another example. Here, if you have this problem here, you see this arm is moving, rotating counterclockwise to the left, and this peg, due to the movement of arm, he has to move upward on this path. So the path, the motion of this peg is constrained along this path. This kind of problem, you should uh, easier to solve with polar or cylindrical since it's a, on a plane we will use polar coordinate system for this problem. Another look, another way to look is that you see for this problem r is given, theta is given, theta dot is given. So this, this is also a hint that you want to use polar or cylindrical coordinate system. In general cases if you see a problem like this in your real life and your this r and theta dot is not given, then you might have to decide whether which coordinate system you want to use. Again, since the path is constrained, the peg path of the peg is constrained along this path, you may want to use polar coordinate system. Similarly, if you see this example here, this arm AB is rotating counterclockwise and the peg here, the uh, orange color peg here, moving upward due to the, since this arm is moving counterclockwise. So the path of this peg is constrained along this line. So you, you want to use, again, polar coordinate system. Similarly here, 
this arm is ro rotating clockwise and um, the path of this um, socket is constrained along this arm, the circular curvilinear arm here, again, you want to use polar coordinate system. Similarly, the same case, um, this arm is rotating counterclockwise here, theta dot is given, and um, the collar here is bound to move along this uh, path here. So you want to again use polar coordinate system. Even the theta dot are, are not given, it's a general problem, you can choose um, measure your, in real life, measure your R, find your, excuse me, find your theta dot and solve in polar coordinate system. How, so when we should use cylindrical? You see in this problem, um, this arm is on 3D, it's not a plane, so in this scenario you want to use um, cylindrical coordinate system. Another, this merry-go-round problem, it is showing you they are going up and down at the same time they are rotating. So you have R, theta, and Z. So you want to use cylindrical coordinate system for this type of problem. The last example is this arm again. The robotic arm is rotating along this blue line path. Um, so it is has a radial distance on the plane. It has angular displacement from its initial position and it has a Z. Uh, position change in height. So again, you want to use cylindrical coordinate system. So that was all about um, our review part of the polar coordinate, um, cylindrical coordinate system for particle kinematics. Let's see a simple example and we'll finish. So this example is saying that theta dot, so d theta over dt, is given as 3 radian per second. Normally the theta for these problems or polar cylindrical coordinate system are represented in radian, not in degree, radian format. So um, the problem asks to find the velocity and acceleration when r equals to 0.5. So this r is the radial distance from the origin to the position of the peg p here. So the arm is rotating counterclockwise, the peg will move along this constrained path. We have to find the velocity and acceleration when r is 0.5, meaning at the top of the, at the edge of the, outer edge of the path. Okay, so how can we solve this problem? There's hints here, you see the r theta dot is given, so it's a hint that you might want to use polar coordinate system. There is no force involved, so that means it belongs to kinematics of particle. Um, so it belongs to chapter 12 for in, in, this, in this case. So how do we start solution? We see it's a curvilinear motion problem because the peg is moving along a curved path. Okay, the peg motion is also constrained along this path. Okay, and r theta dot is given there is no force involved. This all suggests that this problem belongs to chapter 12 um, and uh, best way to solve is using polar or cylindrical coordinate system. Which one should we use? Since the problem is on a plane, we should use polar coordinate system. So we have our formulas here. Once you decide you're going to use that, you should, you're going to use your cheat sheet to open your hint for finding velocity and acceleration because we are looking for velocity and acceleration. So for velocity component, we need r dot, we need r that's given here, r is 0.4 theta. We also need to find theta dot and we should be able to find b. For our acceleration, we need second derivative of r um, theta dot is square. We also need second derivative of theta. So let's find those, r is given, we start from there. R dot is, remember, dr over d theta. So if we take the first derivative, it came 0.4 theta dot. How we get there? If we take derivative of r, if we normally take derivative of x with respect to x, we should get 1. So how, we, how can we put theta dot? This is um, a common mistake that most of you do that um, you think, um, you mess up the unit or the the derivative 
what 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 derivative we are taking uh, of r. So dr uh, r dot is dr over dt. And now we have a function of theta. We have to use the chain rule. R here is with respect to theta and t is time so they don't match. So we have to use the chain rule here dr over d theta d theta over dt. So if I take dr over d theta then I will have 0.4 theta over d theta that will just give me 0.4 then I have th d theta over dt remaining that will give me theta dot. This is the part that mostly people uh, miss that they just put the first derivative of r should be 0.4 but actually it is 0.4 theta dot and it comes from the chain rule. Um, the second derivative we have to take the second derivative because we need it for the acceleration part. If we take the second derivative here you see I have 0.4 theta dot then that means I have to use the product rule um, because you have to take one at a time and then deal with the other one. Um, so if we do 0.4 and theta dot here x and so comparing with this equation x is 0.4 y is theta dot then first derivative of um, x if you take I mean if you leave the 4 0.4 if you take the first derivative of theta dot that will give you theta double dot and you have the 0.4 on the second term you have the y as untouched and dx over dt since 0.4 is constant you don't have the second term will be 0 so you have 0.4 theta double dot. Um, for the other we need theta dot and theta double dot so theta dot is um, 3 that is given theta double dot would be second derivative of a constant so um, this will be 0 actually theta double dot is 0 not 3 here. Um, so we have to find the velocity in acceleration when r equals to 0.5. So we have to plug 0.5 in these equations that we are um, we found here. And also we also have to plug theta because we need theta in these equations. So um, theta when r equals to 0.5 we have to find theta which is r over 0.4 we are using this equation here which is 1.25 radian. Now we have everything that we need to find velocity and acceleration. Uh, if we plug, you will get this velocity components and your magnitude should be 1.92. If you do the same thing for acceleration, your magnitude com of the components should be like this and your total acceleration would be 8.49 meter per second squared. So that was it um, for um, our example. Main catch is that when you apply um, polar or uh, cylindrical coordinate system just be aware that you may have to use chain rule because the derivative is with respect to time and if your r is given in terms of theta there is a, a mismatch between the function and the derivative with respect to your taking then you have to use chain rule to make it work. Um, so that was it for today I'll see you guys in um, next um, session till then take care.